so uh, hi, everyone. I'm Dilla. Uh, so I had a, a really, I've had a really, really awesome. I've had a really, really awesome past couple weeks here, um, which actually started off with uh, like a lot of things these days with a tweet um, about three or four months ago um, from a uh, colleague of mine that I knew from some Google hackathons. We con conspired on some projects and had actually won some prizes at a uh, number of the Google uh, API hackathons. And um, she was like, I'm working with these robot guys. Can you help, you know, um, consult? Because they need like some circuit board help. And, and at the time, I, I, um, I've talked before about some of the, like, the wireless teaching and training that I do and some of the, the wireless networking uh, projects that I've worked on. I was just about getting ready to, to start my teaching season. And I was literally packing up and I had like a week before I had to be out for basically a month. I was like, yeah, sure. Um, I'm running out the door. I'll, call. I'll talk to them when I get back. So I sent off a really quick email and uh, to Keller over here and said, "Hi, I understand you guys need some help with your robots. Um, you know, here's what I'm doing. I do most of the wireless stuff here, and I also built some robots. Here's some of the robots that I've built. Um, check it out." And I went off my trip and I came back, and um, lo and behold, I found that. Uh, So I came back from my trip and I found out, holy crap, these guys put the fan bot up in their hiring page. Oh my god. I have to get back in touch. Okay, I was gonna get back in touch with him anyways because it's his robots, but oh my god, now I really have to talk to these guys. And we started talking and we talked a little bit more and there, there was some you know, a lot of enthusiasm and everything and next thing I knew I was on my way, I was on a plane to Vegas um, to go basically hang out with the Remotive team for a weekend and I got, they picked me up at the airport, they took me off to Romo headquarters and like put me up for the weekend and fed me and let me play with hack on robots. Um, I'm, I made them a claw uh, for their robot. Uh, let me just skip forward here a little bit. So I made them a claw for their robot. Uh, using their board, uh, and uh, we had some servo action going on there through their little auxiliary ports, and um, then, uh, yeah, and, and so I had, uh, oh, and then they're like, oh, you have to bring the fan by. So um, what goes better with the robots than like hot sauce? Um, so if you if you remember like a couple weeks ago when I was posting on a list, hey, I need to take this robot through security. How the heck do I do this without getting it like busted or confiscated? So I finally figured it out, and this is this is after I got there, um, and we just hung out for the weekend, and we um, we built robots and, and made robots, and this is like what their place looks like when this is like what your place looks like when your Kickstarter project just completely takes off beyond all your expectations, and suddenly you find your entire apartment full of robot parts. I got in there, I was like, robot parts everywhere. These guys are building robots, and they're testing robots, and there's this constant, I hardly got any sleep all weekend. I had so much fun, I went back the next weekend. Wow. So, and, I, and while I was there, I was telling Keller, hey, you guys, you have to come up, check out Homebrew, um, and uh, you have to come meet the other robot geeks that I hang out with. So, this is some of the team working on robots, um, this is robot parts for the Romos, uh, more robot parts, uh, some of the uh, guys uh, building robots. So I had a really, really awesome time, and uh, thank you, Keller. Um, hi, guys. It's pretty cool to be here. Uh, I've been talking all day, and so... I'm tired, and so I figured it'd be more fun to just play with robots, so I don't want to talk all that much. Um, these three robots are all waiting for you guys to control them, so I'll tell you how. Um, do any of you guys have iPhones or iPod Touches? 
couple people. Okay, so pull out the iPhone and download uh, the Remotive app on your phone. And then you can connect to a wireless network that I'm generating called Remotive. And the password is also Remotive. Um, and as soon as you do that, you can open up the app and take control of one of these robots. And it will stream video um, to the iPhone and you can just like drive them around the room and make faces at people and take pictures of people, um, whatever you want. You can kind of harass them while, while I talk. Um, okay, so while we're waiting for them to do that, <laughs> um, so I figured, you know, I would come out and I, like seeing all of the robots you guys are building, like it's just super inspiring. We, um, our company is based in Las Vegas, and we are like totally alien in Las Vegas. People don't even know what robots are. So it's pretty cool to come out here and see like everybody building robots, including like you little guys. Um, so that's awesome. It's pretty inspiring. Um, so yeah. So oh, I've got a little bit on your phone. Oh, go for it. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll drive them around. Like please, they're meant to be driven around. So um, so my co-founders and I at Remotive uh, grew up being total nerds. Like we watched. Um, Star Wars and Transformers and like, WALL-E when we were kids and uh, we thought that robots were totally awesome and they would definitely change our lives and it was only when we all graduated from college like a couple years ago that it occurred to us, man, like it really is crazy that robots are kind of like the unfulfilled promise of science fiction. It's like so obvious to science fiction writers six months ago that um, that robots would change the world and we think that that hasn't really happened. And when we think about why that hasn't happened, we figure that processors are really expensive and they're really hard to build. Um, and it occurred to us that we're already all carrying around really powerful processors in our pockets in the form of smartphones. So uh, we decided to put a smartphone on top of a robot and, decide, and, and try to build a robot that was cheap enough that normal people could buy him. That was really important to us because when we look at robots today, like there are really cheap robots that you can buy on Amazon for like 50, 60, 70 bucks. Um, they're cheap pieces of plastic, they break after three months, and whatever they do when you take them out of the package is what they do and they break three months later. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, the robots actually do cool things like the turtle bots that you guys are using or, you know, you know upward to Osimo cost between you know, a couple grand to, you know, a couple million. Uh, so we think that there's this huge chasm in terms of robots that are actually cheap enough for normal people to buy, but are powerful enough to actually do really cool, useful stuff. And so that's what we think through every day when we're like building these robots. This guy's name is Romo. Um, the idea for Romo is to just sit right in the middle of that gaping hole in terms of robotics, which is selling something at a price point. So we sell Romo for $99. Um, and selling something at a price point that you know, normal people can buy and Romo can do really awesome stuff. Uh, so we built a prototype of Romo, uh, and about two weeks after we built it, we were accepted into Techstars, which is an incubator. Uh, we went to Techstars Seattle, and for three months, we went through the program there, um, just focused on building Romo, and we did everything from scratch. So we designed the circuit board, we designed the communication protocol that goes from the circuit board to, to uh, that communicates from the circuit board to the phone, uh, through the audio jack. We designed the entire exoskeleton of Romo, which is made out of laser cut acrylic. Um, and then we also uh, wrote all of the apps that make Romo do cool stuff. Um, and during that time, like all the other teams at Techstar was, were raising money and they were like talking to investors and wheeling and dealing. And we were pretty much just sitting in our rooms building Romo because it was a lot of work. And, um, and so a lot of the mentors started getting kind of worried and doubtful that we were going to even become a company. And they were like, you guys need to pivot. This is a bad idea. Nobody's going to put a phone on a robot. Um, you know, it's, it's stupid. It's not useful. It, kids don't want it. Adults don't want it. Um, and that really sucked to hear. And so we decided to put them on Kickstarter, which is what um, Ted is now doing and the guys at Ologic. So we put them on Kickstarter and we set a goal of raising $30,000 over 45 days. Um, and we thought that if we could just get to that goal of $30,000, that would at least be enough money to like, keep the company running for a month or two after we got out of Techstars. Um, and much to our surprise, we ended up raising $30,000 in, in a little over two days, which was awesome. 
So as it turns out, there are nerds out there, and they do think that smartphone robots are really cool, and they are willing to pay something like $99 to buy them, to hack with them and play with them. Um, so over the course of the next like you know 42 days, we ended up becoming the sixth largest technology Kickstarter project ever. We raised $115,000. Um, and then coming off of that momentum, when we graduated from Techstars, uh, we were the only team with no funding committed when we presented, and within two weeks we had raised a round of funding larger than any of the other two companies in Techstars combined. And we were the only, only the second hardware company to come out of Techstars um, ever. So we thought that that was really, really cool. Um, Since then, we've really, like as Steve mentioned, things have been really crazy because now we're building like thousands of robots in our apartment. We're selling them on PayPal faster than we can build them. Um, and like all you have to do is look at our Kickstarter forums or the forums on our website or look at our Twitter feed um, or look at our Vimeo page. Like people are posting videos like crazy of Romo's doing different things. And the really cool thing is that because we designed them to be pretty much open source, like the communication protocol is totally open. Um, tons of other people have like picked him up and poured lots and lots of work into him. Like we don't pay these people, um, which is just still amazing to me. But like, you know, a guy in the Netherlands named Yarno spent God knows how many hours porting over our entire code base for Windows phones. We weren't gonna be compatible with Windows phones and this guy Yarno just, because he was so psyched on it, spent you know, who knows how much time porting it over. So now Romo is compatible with iPhones, Android phones, and Windows phones. Um, so that's been really cool, and seeing a lot of the other app developers look at Romo and start to think about, you know, there are, I think, now like 600,000 apps currently um, served in the App Store. Like, of those apps, how many of them would have been written differently if the app developers could actually control the movement of the phone? and make the phone move around in your three-dimensional space. And so our goal is to basically create an app store for robots. Um, and the, the nice thing about it is that because the app store already provides a software distribution platform, we don't have to build that out. So every week we can send an update, like an email update, to all of our users who own Romos, saying Romo learned something new this week, just update your app to get that new behavior or that new functionality. And so that's our goal. Like every week at this point, we're updating the app and adding new functionalities. Um, right now, Romo is mainly, like, he's fun, you can control him. Um, I, is anybody controlling him right now and seeing the video? See you the are? Video. Can you drive him around if you use that joystick? That oh, hold on, maybe I can turn him on. That would be, that would be important. There you go, okay. Now they're all on. Now see if they'll move. Keep moving. So you should be able to drive them all around. And you, there you go, okay, there awesome. Um, so, you, so currently they are communicating, they're streaming video back and forth over, um, over the Wi-Fi network that I'm generating, so they, they can communicate over a local Wi-Fi network. Um, what we're doing right now is building out the server architecture to allow us to stream video between two, any two smart devices anywhere in the world, which we think is really cool. Um, and we put a ton of effort into making the thing totally cross-platform, so you can communicate from iOS to Android, Android to Windows Phone, Windows Phone to iOS. Um, you can control it from an iPad, any tablet, um, and any Mac computer. We're work so there's a, there's a Mac app, so you can control it from your laptop. We're working on PCs. Um, so the idea is like any smart device, anywhere in the world, you can take control of one of these robots. Um, and in the next couple weeks, in the next couple weeks, we're going to be demoing um, the ability, I'll be back here um, meeting with a couple investors and a couple of major distributors, and we're going to be demoing the ability to just if you take your robot, you can just email a link to someone else anywhere, and they can instantly just control that robot through the browser. So when we think about like what Romo can do and why he's powerful, a lot of the robots out there today, especially telepresence robots, like this not new. Like telepresence isn't new, it's not revolutionary. Um, AnyBots does a great job of it, and iRobot has a, has a pretty cool um, telepresence robot. But those robots, the cheapest ones, cost $8,000. Um, and so telepresence even, it's kind of a wonky word, you know, it's like, oh, telepresence, it's something that businesses use and normal people don't. Um, and we think that the reason for that is not that telepresence is only useful for businesses, it's just that normal people, there's no way they can afford an $8,000 robot. Um, so Romo is not as good as those robots, 
but he's like 60 or 70 percent as good, and he costs one percent uh -oh. of what they cost. Uh -oh. <laughs> yes, this is an example. Um, so we think that's pretty cool, and so we think that there's tons of disruptive stuff you can do with a $99 robot that um, that you know you can control from anywhere in the world, like. You know, how many uh, museums are there out there in which it would be cool to have little robots running around on the floor so when the museum closes, uh, you know, you can unleash the robots and you can like log into a robot for five bucks and tour MoMA in New York City tonight from here. Um, you know, another, another thing to consider for us is that how many parents in the U.S. are divorced and live in cities outside of, um, or, or live separately from their kids? That's a major, in our in our opinion, like that's um, that's a major pain point. And those people can't afford an eight thousand dollar telepresence robot, but they can afford something like this. And this is a way to physically inhabit a space in, in which you know when you're halfway across the world. So um, that's kind of the dream of what we're building and the three major markets that we're attacking right now. So we've grown the team a lot. When when we um, graduated from TechStars, it was just three of us, um, myself co-founders. We've grown the team now to 13 people. Um, I'm proud to announce that a couple weeks ago we hired our first person who was too old to be on their uh, parents' health care plan. So <laughs> that was a major business step. Yes. Thank you, Obama. Um, yeah, it's great. Like, we haven't had any health care costs uh, for the entire first six months of the startup because we were all under the age of 26. Um, we just hired a senior software engineer from my robot who's 32, so we're, we're bottom healthcare. Um, and so yeah, the team's at 13 right now, we're hiring, um, we just flew out a couple kids that I think, Steve, you met Kane and Brian and yeah. Newton, right? Yeah. So two, two CS grads from Harvard who are absolute rock stars. One of them had an offer to go to Bridgewater, which is like mega competitive uh, hedge fund. Um, and he chose to turn that down and come build robots with us in Las Vegas, which I think is awesome. Um, and then the other one, Yonatan, uh, is deferring a year of teaching at, the, at doing a Boston teacher's residency to come build out the drag and drop programming language that we're creating with Romo that'll allow anybody with no programming experience to just create like simple, um, simple behaviors and personalities for Romo using graphical blocks with actions that can then be inserted into like when statements and if clauses. Um, and then, uh, so, so anyway, that's that. Like, we're really excited about the team, and we're growing really fast. Uh, and so we kind of have education, and then this idea of telepresence, we call it family presence, because we think it's a little less wonky. Um, and then finally, we think that Romo is an awesome platform for augmented reality. So like OpenCV is an amazing computer, it's an amazing open source computer vision library um, for mobile devices. It isn't really being used, because it's kind of weird to use it when you're holding it in your hands. Um, so we think it's actually a lot cooler, like augmented reality is a lot cooler if you're driving a robot around. Because all of a sudden, like if you have two ro like Romos, you can play Romo Mario, like uh, a Romo cart, where you drive around your living room and you pick up little shells and shoot them at each other. When the shell hits the other robot in virtual reality, the robot actually spins out in real life. So you're driving around, like you see, you know, your living room when you're controlling them, but there's also a layer of virtual reality added onto that. Or like Romo Halo, where you could pick up different <laughs> weapons and health pickups. And that stuff is actually not that crazy, it's not that hard to do, because glyph detection at this point is, is, is good enough that you can drive up to certain things as long as you print out glyphs. They can see those glyphs and then um, robot, you know, like the, the software can essentially add a three-dimensional object in place of that glyph. And as it gets closer, that object gets bigger, and as you go far away, that object gets smaller. So those are kind of the three main things we're focusing on, family presence, education, and augmented reality. Um, and uh, yeah, it's exciting. I, I wish I could tell you guys more about our distribution relationships, but the companies we're working with would kill me. But suffice it to say, it's really, really exciting. And Roma will be sold in um, a, a prominent retail store in May or June. So we're really, really excited about that. I'm done talking. I, what are you guys? What are you guys curious to know? You're not going to have any problems getting questions. Go for it. Yeah. I have a little bit of rain on the parade. Okay. And I spent some time this weekend or this week for talking with Zach on the phone trying to get my phone <laughs> working. Uh huh. And I have a 3G phone. My son gave me his old 3G, mm. and it wouldn't work. 
And I also tried using this Android HTC, and yeah. that wouldn't work. And so I'm waiting to hear from you guys how I'm going to be able to use either one of those. Yeah, so the HTC is not compatible, and this is definitely something, I mean, so we have been like working our butts off. Like, we, we get four hours of sleep a night trying to make Romo compatible with everything. That's our, that's our goal. Um, Android really makes our lives hard because there are so many different hardware configurations, um, and, and uh, it, it, it's definitely a challenge. So we aren't currently compatible with HTC. We are compatible with iPhone 3Gs, but it has to be running the latest operating system. Are you running uh, iOS 5.1? Okay, uh, look, we'll, we'll work with you, we'll get it working, like we promise. Yeah? Is the cost of Bluetooth, you know, does that throw you out of the $99 price range to add that? So it's a really good question, and we've been seriously considering Bluetooth because the audio jack, so the advantages of the audio jack are that it is, uh, it's universal. And we also don't have to pay licensing fees to someone like Apple if we want to go through the 30-pin dock connector. Uh, the disadvantages of the audio jack are that it's, it doesn't look great, and it also we can't charge the phone from the robot, which is actually kind of a problem. Uh, someone died. <laughs> um, so when we start thinking about a lot of the family presence applications, it's actually really important to us that we be able to drive Romo up. Like we want Romo, like Roomba, to be able to autonomously navigate back to a charging station and charge at the end of the night, so that you don't have to worry about it. My audio um, port is also on the bottom on this phone. That would be a awkward dock. Yeah. Uh, what phone is that? The Galaxy, Galaxy Nexus. Nexus, yeah. Um, it could go up to that. We can make it work. I mean, we could dock it. We could dock it from the bottom because you could like inset the the connector into the robot. Um, I suspect what we're going to end up doing is having a couple different SKUs and going to like a micro USB connector and and the 30 pin dock connector just because it's so cool to be able to charge the phone from the robot. You can do really crazy stuff. Like, you know, you could leave your house, travel to Beijing, and all of a sudden be like, oh, did I leave the door unlocked? Or, you know, is my, are my kids throwing a raging party while I'm gone? And you could just like jump onto your computer, log in, take control of the robot whenever you want, and drive it around the house. Um, you can't do that unless you can charge the, the device from the robot. So. Did, did you, you mentioned the, the Apple is using the 30-pin connector. Yep. Is that, um, have you looked into it? Like what the I think are? it's five bucks. Uh, really, it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it really stinks, um, but it's a price that we will probably, we, yeah. we will have to incur. Yeah. 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 Is there any, because uh, you've explained how the robot with the phone on board works with a computer or another phone or other connected device. Is there any applications where it's just the robot and the phone? Yeah, totally. Like, so we, right now we're not focusing on that because it's really funny. Like, I've watched you guys come up here and present, and the thing that occurred to me was like, whoa, these guys are way smarter than we are. Um, you guys are all tackling the... <laughs> no. Like you guys are all tackling the really hard problems. Like autonomous navigation is really hard, um, especially if you're doing that using computer vision, which is what we would ultimately hope to do with Romo. Um, uh oh, it seems like is someone doing that or is he freaking out? <laughs> it seems like he's spazzing. I'm gonna reset him. Um, so. We are, like, it, it's funny, right? Because this goal of like building a cheap robot and doing something, like, we come at it from a different perspective, which is, like, we're lazy. Like, we have, our team is only 13 people, and we're trying to do, like, everything. Like, you know, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, industrial design, like, software development, like, operations, all of it. Um, and so we have to choose the things that are, like, the absolute easiest to get you the biggest bang for your buck in terms of making people happy and getting people psyched on robots and technology. Um, so autonomous navigation is something we would love to do. We just haven't had the time to do it yet. Yeah, well, even beyond, uh, not even autonomous navigation, but you were mentioning the, the graphical programming. Oh, yeah, yeah, the graphical programming, great example. Yeah, because doing that, because, I mean, I've seen robots, something like Mindstorms or Vex, yep. use an educational environment, and the problem is there's so much uh, stuff needed, the computer, the programmer, all of that, to be yep. able to program it right on the robot. Yeah, huge thing for educators. Totally. So listen, are there any, not to, there's no one in here who works for Lego, is there? <laughs> okay. I'll tell you, the only person I know that works for, for Lego is Dave Calkins, uh, who runs RoboGames. So when you go to RoboGames, 
be quiet about Lego. Okay, all right. Fair enough. I enough. think you can say anything so bad. So I, I was like a Lego freak when I was a kid. So I love Lego, but I have this thing about Lego Mindstorms. I think it sucks. Um, and everybody that we talk to, everybody that we talk to, like Boy Scout troop leaders, um, people who teach, like try to teach robotics uh, to kids in after school classes, or people who, like physics teachers who try to get kids excited about um, physics using Lego Mindstorms, like the universal feedback that we get is that it is powerful, but totally impossible to use and really hard to learn. Um, so that's not an ideal platform to get kids excited about technology. Um, the crazy thing is that Lego Mindstorms is like a monopoly um, in the US. Like there are no legitimate competitors as far as I can tell. And they, by our estimates, they're a private company, but by our estimates, they make $300 million in annual revenue in the US alone off Lego Mindstorms, which blows our mind. They have like the, the Okay, anyway, that's all I'll say there. So, there's the, like, when we look, so, when, so, again, we come at it from a different perspective. Like, we come at it from the perspective of, like, trying to start a business and, like, and get a lot of these things out there so that we can get people really psyched. Because in order to get other people excited about building apps and, and, and behaviors for it, we have to build something that there are enough of out there that people actually find it exciting to develop for that platform. So, that's a challenge and... Um, when we look at markets that are ripe for d disruption, like <laughs> Lego Mindstorms, man, like that is a market that is ripe for disruption. Like there has been no innovation there for many years. Yeah. Um, have you looked at the App Inventor for Android? As mm -hmm. a, and so I think that's been retired. So it got, it got moved. So we, we were at one point uh, working with that group. It was a Google-led uh, Google project to make a web-based graphical interface for programming Android apps. And it was all drag and drop. And draw your UIs. You did it in a browser, and then your your laptop would push the app to your phone. You could do it even uh, remotely. Uh, but we ended up shutting it down and handing it off to uh, MIT. MIT. So MIT is now still running with it, and so it is open source and hmm. it is out there. So uh, it might be useful. Uh, one of the things we added just before releasing it was Lego Mindstorm support because the, the reason was that the Lego has a nice, when you turn it on, it has this direct protocol, you can start talking to it right away. Right. And so we added in there little little modules that any anybody could use to drag a motor control or a sensor reader. Um, that having that equivalent <coughs> for this, I think, would be pretty powerful. Would be pretty powerful. <laughs> and, you know, the other thing that we think about a lot is that, um, I read this thing by Jeff Canada the other day. He runs um, some really successful charter schools in Brooklyn. Um, and he was describing like the mindset of the kids that he works with, and these are kids that, as he described it, often can't afford to eat dinner at night. But he said that there's this insane trend, which is that these kids, ab above even food, value two things. It's shoes and iPhones. Um, and so a lot of these kids who, like, how on earth do they afford it, but somehow they manage to like buy iPhones because it's such an important status symbol and it's such an important symbol of maturity. So in our opinions, like if there is any way to go and reach kids who are otherwise unreachable with like the message of like technology is cool, computer science is cool, you can build really awesome stuff, like it should be done through iPhones, which is something that kids are already familiar with. Like they get it, they understand how to interact with it. So unlike Lego Mindstorms, you're not having to teach an entirely new interface, an entirely new use you know, protocol. They they know they get it. You know, they plug the phone in, they see how it works and, and you can take it from there. Yeah. You can get people excited about Lego Mindstorms when you say that you can use it with Ross. <laughs> <laughs> but is this for people like you, Boris, or people like are, are people who aren't like robot wizards? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait a second. We're really running out of time here. So we're gonna we're, that gentleman has had his hands up and then we're gonna do Dillo and then we're gonna, we're gonna let everybody mob you. Because that's what's okay. gonna happen. Okay. <laughs> so, you first. I just want to find out what, uh, do you have a text based programming language for it? Um, currently, it's all, I mean, you know, currently the firmware is written in C, and the all the software, it's all just iOS apps. So, it's written in C. Um, and, I, and the cross platform, I'll have to check on this, but I think that the vast majority of the cross-platform communication protocol between Android and iOS, it's just all written in C. And that's all open source? Um, yes, it's all of it. Well, I, yeah, the, it's, the whole communication protocol is open source. 
Like it, it, we, we encourage like everybody like buy Romo and hack on him. And like if you look at the forums, you'll see tons of different people hacking him and doing different cool stuff with him. Um, so we, we think that's awesome. Sorry. Yeah, Dillo. Yeah, just two things really quick in terms of hacking on things. When I went to visit them, I literally, I walked in the door, I put down my bags and I sat down and we immediately just started, you know, what can you do with this? What can I do with the aux ports? I think the first night, um, I got there at like 10.30 and by like two or three that morning, we had the server. We had already blown up a couple Romo boards trying to get them <laughs> working. We eventually got it working the next day. But yeah, just immediately started packing on. The other thing is, um, in terms of Mindstorms, I don't know anybody, anybody that I know that actually used Mindstorms, the first thing they did was replace the programming language and to use like Lego S or, um, you know, C or, you know, Forth uh, or something other than the actual language that they originally shipped with it. That was the first thing I know everybody did is to replace the, uh, replace the programming environment. Okay. Um, well, I guess I'll just finish by saying that uh, <coughs> We would be really interested to hear from all of you. Like, literally, it would make me very happy if I, over the next day, like, receive an email from every single one of you in this room. Um, we're very lonely in Las Vegas, and I'm kind of realizing, like, I'm seeing all you guys hug each other and be super supportive. And I'm like, man. No, I'm not hugging you. <laughs> um, but anyway, like, it's really important for us to be able to, you know, like, so it's very valuable. Like, please send me an email, keller at remotive.com. If that's too hard, founders at remotive.com, romo at remotive.com, it'll all find its way back to us. But we would love to hear from you guys, and not to be sketchy, because yeah. I just heard you describe the recruiting policy, yeah, well, we're but. Still, we're still working, but you, yes, we do allow robot companies to recruit at this club. Okay, so <laughs> we are building cool robots, and we need people to help us do it. So please send me an email. Okay, thank you very much. Cool. Osmond's still here. Yeah. Do you have the final results of the logo yet or not? No, I didn't tally them up. I was going to do it after the, after the meeting. Okay. So the, the okay. final tally will show up sometime tomorrow, probably. Yeah. Okay. And uh, with that, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Okay. Uh, we still have to find the meeting room for next month, but it sounds like we've got a really good lead for uh, Cit Citrix, which is right there near the uh, Santa Clara uh, Convention Center. Okay. Uh, with that, thank you for very much for coming, and now I can all mob them. <laughs>